morning. I'm going to start with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we are very thankful for this new day. We're thankful that God allows us to get up every day and start our day with thee and with some personal growth. We pray that you will help us to learn and remain positive and improve as we're growing in every day. We are thankful for our wins and our failures, and that we know that we can learn through both. And we pray that thought help us to guide us to be able to find the people that need our growth in their lives, that we can help them to be closer to thee. And we also pray that thought help us to find those who need this be strengthened and learned financially or community and that they can be able to be open to this idea and that they can share with people in their prayer life department. We're thankful for their many blessings and we pray that as we go through this month that we can have <clears throat> excitement and consistency and we want to start this day with thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. <clears throat> so we're in the lot of modeling. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start at the bottom of page 211. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Some scratchy boy morning. <clears throat> okay. Whom should I follow? I have learned a lot from people I've never met. Dale Carnegie taught me people skills when I read How to Win Friends and Influence People in Junior High School. James Allen helped me understand that my attitude and the way that I thought would impact the course of my life when I read As a Man Thinketh. And Oswald Sanders revealed the importance of leadership to me for the first time when I read his book, Spiritual Leadership. Most people who decide to grow personally find their first mentors in the pages of books. That is a great place to start. For that matter, it's a great, a great place to continue. I'm still learning from dozens of people every year that I will never meet. But at some point, you must find personal models too. If you follow only yourself, you will find yourself going in circles. I've had the privilege of connecting with many leaders <clears throat> whose modeling I have found worthy of imitation. People such as consultant Fred Smith, speaker Zig Ziglar, and coach John Wooden have helped me tremendously. <clears throat> Others who looked better from a distance than they actually were when I got to know them turned out to be disappointments, which just goes to show that you must be selective when it comes to choosing mentors and models. I smile every time I think of the two derelicts sunning themselves on a park bench. The first guy said, the reason I'm here is because I refuse to listen to anyone. The second guy responded, the reason I'm here is because I listen to everyone. Neither course of action is helpful. You must be selective in who you choose as a mentor. From both the positive and the negative experiences I've had with mentors, I've developed criteria to determine the worthiness of a model for me to follow. <clears throat> I share them with you in the hope that they will help you to make good choices for this area of your growth. A good mentor is a worthy example. We become like the people we admire and the models we follow. For that reason, we should take great care when determining which people we ask to mentor us. They must not only display professional excellence and possess skill sets from which we can learn, they must also demonstrate character worthy of emulating. Many athletes, celebrities, politicians, and business leaders today try to disavow being any kind of role model when others are already following them and mimicking their behavior. They want people to separate their personal behavior from their professional life, but such a division cannot really be made. Religious leader and author Gordon B. Hinckley advised, It is not wise or even possible to divorce private behavior from public leadership, though there are those who have gone to great lengths to suggest that this is the only possible view of enlightened individuals. individuals. They are wrong. They are deceived. By its very nature, true leadership carries with it the burden of being an example. 
Is it asking too much of any public officer elected by his or her constituents to stand tall and be a model before the people, not only in the ordinary aspects of leadership, but in his or her behavior? If values aren't established and adhered to at the top, behavior down the ranks is seriously jeopardized and undermined. Indeed, in any organization where such is the case, be it a family, a corporation, a society, or a nation, the values being neglected will in time disappear. As you look for role models and mentors, scrutinize their personal lives as carefully as their public performance. Your values will be influenced by theirs, so you shouldn't be too casual who you choose to follow. Number two, a good mentor is available. Steel magnate and philanthropist philanthropist um, Andrew Carnegie said, as I grow older, I pay less attention to what men say. I just watch what they do. For us to be able to observe models up close and see what they do, we must have some contact with them. That requires access and availability. For us to be actively mentored, we must have time with people to ask questions and learn from their answers. When I mentor people, we usually meet officially only a few times a year. However, during the year, we sometimes spend time together informally. Many of their mentoring questions are stimulated by my actions, not my words. That thought humbles me because I know at times I fall short of the ideals and values that I teach. As I have often said, my, gener my greatest leadership challenge is leading me. Teaching people what to do is easy, showing them, showing them is much more difficult. The greatest piece of advice I can give in the area of availability is that when you are looking for a mentor, don't shoot too high too soon. If you're considering going into politics for the first time, you don't need the advice of the President of the United States. If you are a high school student thinking about learning to play the cello, you don't need to be mentored by Yo-Yo Ma. If you're fresh out of school and just starting your career, don't expect to get extensive mentoring time from the CEO of your organization. Why shouldn't I, you may be thinking. Why not start with the best? First of all, if you're just starting out, nearly all of your questions can be answered by someone two or three levels ahead of you, not ten. And their answers will be fresh because they will have recently dealt with the issues you're dealing with. Second, CEOs need to be spending their time answering the questions of the people who are on the verge of leading at their level. I'm not saying you should never go to the top. I'm saying spend the majority of your time being mentored by people who are available, willing, and suited for the stage of your career. And as you progress in your development, find new mentors for your new level of growth. <clears throat> Number three, a good mentor has proven experience. The farther you go in the pursuit of your potential, the more new ground you will have to break. How do you figure out how to proceed? Benefit from others' experience. As the Chinese proverb says, to know the road ahead, ask those coming back. In the early 1970s, when my church was growing rapidly, I realized I was moving into territory that I hadn't been in before, nor had anyone I knew. To help me figure out how to lead better in this new territory, I began to seek out successful church leaders in large churches, larger churches around the country. I've told the story many times of how I offered $100 to them for 30 minutes of their time. Many graciously agreed to meet with me. I'd go to the meeting armed with a legal pad full of questions and pick their brains. I can hardly explain how much I learned in those, in those sessions. Every time I ventured into a new venture, I've sought the advice of people with proven experience. When I started my first business, I talked to successful business people who could give me advice. When I wanted to write my first book, I sat at the feet of successful authors who could guide me. To learn to communicate more effectively, I studied communicators. Hearing about their bad experiences made me aware of potential problems I would be facing up the road. Hearing about their good experiences gave me an anticipation of potential opportunities up ahead of me. I don't know of a successful person who hasn't learned from, their, from more experienced people. Sometimes they follow in their footsteps. Other times they use their advice to help them break new ground. Former New York City Mayor Ju Rudy Giuliani said, all leaders are influenced by those they admire. Reading about them and studying their traits inevitably sh allows an inspiring leader to develop his own leadership traits. A good mentor possesses wisdom. There's a well-known story of an expert who was called by a company to look at their manufacturing system. It had broken and everything was at, was at a standstill. When the expert arrived, 
He carried nothing but a little black bag. Silently, he walked around the equipment for a few minutes and then stopped. As he focused on one specific area of the equipment, he pulled a small hammer out of his bag and he tapped it gently. Suddenly, everything began running again, and he quietly left. The next day, he sent a bill that made the manager go ballistic. It was for a thousand dollars. Quickly, the manager emailed the expert and wrote, I will not pay this outrageous bill without it being itemized and explained. Soon, he received an invoice with the following words. For the tapping on equipment with the hammer, one dollar. For knowing where to tap, 999. That is the value of wisdom. Mentors with wisdom often show us where to tap. Their understanding, experience, and knowledge help us to solve problems that we would have a hard time handling on our own. Fred Smith was a mentor who often deposited wisdom into my life. One day I asked him why highly successful people often sabotage their lives and hurt their careers. He said, Never confuse the giftedness of a person with the person. Their gifts allow them to do amazing things, but the person may be flawed, which will eventually cause harm. That bit of wisdom has helped me immeasurably. First, it has helped me to better understand how to work with talented people and to help them develop. Second, it has been a caution to me personally. I know that having talent in a given area never exempts me from neglecting discipline or character issues. We're all just one step away from stupid. Wise people often use just a few words to help us learn and develop. They open our eyes to worlds we might not have otherwise seen without their help. They help us navigate difficult situations. They help us seize opportunities we would otherwise miss. They make us wiser than our years and experiences. And experience, actually. Ooh, mentors. I feel like I have a lot of mentors, but I forget to like actively seek them out. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good chapter. I'm gonna 